You're a really fun person to talk to. I enjoy talking to you. I truly feel like when, when you have Drew Barrymore's attention, you truly have it. I'm about to do another Art of the Interview, which is a series that is very personal to me because I really hold journalism dear to my heart. Um, the reason we call it the Art of the Interview is because the way that people do their research and pose questions can be the game changer, not only in a conversation, but in the way that we learn about that person or the world in general. And I can't think of anyone that I have a deeper respect for, more admiration, and just awe. I want to learn, I want to be, I want it all with Samantha B. Being asked to do this is like a huge thrill for me. So I'm here, let's do it, let's break it down, let's talk. Now you, when you were a kid, mm -hmm. I heard that you had a news I did. thing. I did fake news when I was a kid, or I, I did, I would do recordings of myself as a newscaster, like comedy, like comedy news. I was maybe like six or seven years old. I called it news for goofs. And so I had like a little cassette recorder, like just like this little box with cassette tapes and a microphone. And I think that I was doing an impression of Kermit doing an impression of a journalist, mm -hmm. but I was really super into it. And then I would record people's conversations. I would hide under the kitchen table and record everybody talking. It's very, you cannot, anyway, I spied on my family also. Well, you were ahead of the game, you and George Orwell, um, because that's <laughs> happening now uh, everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. I love that story about you because I really care about the news. I, I'm obsessed with it. And I always have been since I can remember. And I liked my news with a flair of comedy. And so I was so curious as to what your origin story of News for Goofs was, because I loved late night and I loved Saturday Night Live. Totally. And I was so curious as to what your influences are. And the Kermit the Frog is like, I am freaking out. I, rem I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, he would be like, Kermit the Frog here and do a whole report on the weather or whatever in a trench coat, like a re yes. reporter. All these things. And also, I'm like you, I watched SNL too, growing up, if I was like at my mom's house, she would be watching it. And I'd be, she'd be like, don't tell your grandmother you're up at midnight watching, you know, watching Jane Curtin be an anchor on, you know what I mean? On weekend update. But I would like watch Jane Curtin be kind of a jerk. And they were doing jokes. They were doing more pure jokes. I mean, these are shared memories from when we were like little kids and eventually they went on to inform entire careers. So Anyway, I guess the point is, what are my kids going to do as their jobs? I don't know. Now I'm like, what am I doing to them? I don't know. I do know that as a human being who did grow up too fast, I too was hosting SNL at six and watching all of that world and immersed in anything. I had access to everything. And David Letterman was my first crush, as was Ted Koppel. Ted Koppel? Oh my God. I, They're amazing. I can I can get behind a Ted Koppel crush. That makes sense. I was always really attracted to smart and funny. That that's the hottest combo to me, period. And then I think as I grew up, you know, maybe I had a crush when I was a kid, you know, on these certain men. It was like, who is informing my world? Who is telling me about what I need to know? Who's giving me my medicine with so much comedy sugar and I am just eating it up like bite after bite. I love information that can be delivered to me in a way that is entertaining and I don't even need it to always be funny, but I want it to be gripping. I want the story to be told correctly so that it 
pulls me along. How do you have the cleverness to say some of the things that you do? The truth is that I have like an incredible team of people. I'm the face of all of this, but I'm the face of, you know, I'm the forward facing person of a team of 65 people. It's not just like Sam B going like, boop, 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 make them ups. You know, it's really, it's written and my head writers are incredible and my producers are incredible and my research, you know, we're a very research driven show. So we're making jokes, but it's all on top of, you know, it's, it, 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 the foundation of that is a really diligent, like a very exacting, uh, like highly performing research team who just do an incredible job of sorting through, you know, the, the points that we want to hit, the points that make we're storytelling, you know, we're really truly as a team storytelling and putting jokes on top of that. We all feel angry about the same things, sad about the same things, happy about the same things. Like we're very focused on being on the right side of history, I think. Do you have a Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder that says you do want this for the long game and therefore there's a lack of vanity? That's possible. I mean, that is super possible. Like there's a part of me that's always, there's a part of me that every six months goes, I'm going to, I'm going to start an organic farm. Like, forget it. I raise bees out here. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then I go, okay, well, what about on day two? That was a great idea on day one, but honestly, sometimes you just need a two week break. And then at the end of the two week break, you go, well, now I have all these other ideas. (laughs) And so I do think, well, I think you're in it for the long haul. I feel like I'm in it for the long haul. And that's exciting. Like not always knowing what the next chapter is, but knowing that there will be one. I really gravitated towards wanting to be in all those different positions, some of which were had nothing to do with the way I looked, writing and directing and producing, um, and wasn't about me being in front of a camera. And I think it was a real blessing because I'm like, there are things beyond this that I'm so attracted and invigorated and feeling whole from. Yeah. You feel like liberated that you know you can do a million things. Yes, or- for sure. And you must also, like I, I do. definitely remember a stage of life early in my career, which was very much about sitting around and waiting for my agent to call me and they rarely called and it was lonely and I was scared and like always checking the phone to see if there was something wrong with the dial tone. Like I probably spent a couple of years dwelling in that place of like, I gotta be home in case the phone rings, in case someone wants me for something. And that is not a place where I can like live. I don't recommend that. Some people are super into that and that's great. I cannot do that. I don't want to wait anymore for someone to tell me they're interested in me for a thing. I want to tell people what I'm interested in and have them go, oh yes, well, I can see now that you know how to make a show from start to finish. We're so alike, it's like freaking me out right now. I used to talk about the magic telephone. I'm like, that magic telephone not only doesn't exist, I want to build that phone. Yes. I want to build the phone. I want to pick it up and call other people with it. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't agree more. You already collaborate with your husband, Jason Jones. We do. We definitely have done that in the past for sure. We had adjoining desks at the Daily Show and we would spend our idle time. Like if we had downtime there, we would spend time sitting across from each other and working on scripts. Um, We actually have a very good balance together. We would each argue for our own kind of creative perspective. Um, but we never, we usually, I would say 99% of the time we never made it personal, which was really great. And we would disagree constantly, but we would find our way through the materials. And I actually think that that was the key to success in collaborating that way. Take me through like just a work session. Well, okay. So Jason and I work very differently with the goal, with an end goal in mind. Like we've always had, because we met, 
we met when I was in my, I'm a little older than him. So I think I was like 26, 27 when we started Hot. dating. He was about 23. And so early in our relationship, I looked to him. I was actually like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, why are you, why are you working so hard <laughs> in a way? And so I learned a lot about work ethic actually from him. And, and did you start as coworkers and then learned how to have a relationship or did you start with a relationship and learn how to be coworkers? We started as sort of as coworkers. We were, we were in our doing, office was, romance. I think that one's still safe to say. I think so. But it was more like children's theater romance. So we were nope, doing. Now we can't do it again. Now you brought yeah. the children into it. No. Nope. So it was, we were doing a play. It was like a touring kind of production. And we weren't in the same cast. We were adjacent. So we were part of kind of a little bit of work travel together. And that's actually how we started having conversations. We each thought that we were just developing a friendship. And then it, it grew really organically out of that over time. A lot of people say a friendship is that like invaluable foundation. For sure. What is your intention with your current show? I think that... I think that, you know, we've been on the air. This is our sixth season. And I, it really took me a long time to actually figure out what that was. I don't know if you're in this space right now, but I would say that for the first two years of my show, I barely knew who I was because I just was like, it's so much work to make, to put a thing on the air. You're doing it five days a week or, you know, like a lot more than me. And um, it took okay. me a long time to, it takes a long time to just calm down. Like there's so much happening. You're answering so many questions and doing so many different things. It takes a minute to just go to drop into it. It actually takes a bit for the, the penny to drop of the full experience. And I think now that one of my intentions with the show is to like, just try and make the world a better place than when I started just to leave television a little bit better <laughs> than how it was when I started. Like we've done some, I've made mistakes. I hope that people can look back and go, Oh, TV was a little bit better in general after that show went off the air because it's a female led, you know, it's a female led show it's a female led staff. We made innovations in the, in, in the way that we did things or we tried, we were always trying to make TV just incrementally a little better for the people who will come behind. And who knew that we would be thanking Kermit the Frog. And oh my God. I just, I love it so much because you do have a goodness but a spine that is so infallible and a wit that is so juicy and desirable. And I just, I'm, I've been a happier person since you've been on the air, whether it was in The Daily Show or your own talk show. You're also really helping people understand a lot of things that other people aren't talking about in that very well-researched, very journalistic way. It's, um, it is very important what you're doing and I love it. And boy, do you give that importance with that sugar that just, who doesn't want that? Ugh, thank you so much. You're a really fun person to talk to. I enjoy talking to you. I truly feel like when when you have Drew Barrymore's attention, you truly have it. I, I just, I love you so much. And you are making television better and you are breaking ceilings and grounds. And I think a lot of our influences in the way we grew up sounds very similar. A lot of our process sounds really similar. Um, and that's humbling to me because I'm like, I just love you so much. So that's cool. Like, let's build that telephone. Thank you, Samantha B. Pleasure talking to you, as always. Thank you so much.